Dave, you like Miller Lite? I love Miller Lite. I had about, uh, responsibly, I had about 8,000 Miller Lights at Wrigley Field for the Dead & Co. concert on a Saturday night. And how were those Miller Lights? They Dave? couldn't have... I, you know how Frank the Tank likes to pair uh, his hot dogs and burgers and stuff with different sodas? <laughs> what do you like to pair your Miller Lite? I like to pair my Miller Lite with different situations, and there is nothing better than jamming out to John Mayer and the Grateful Dead and a beautiful, beautiful summer night in Chicago at a Dead & Co. concert. Now, I'm not looking Miller at Lite. the ad copy, but I know for a fact it says, please give us a personal endorsement. And Dave, I don't think there's a better job. It, it was... That's, it was a religious experience for me. When you wake up as a podcaster, you hope to have a personal endorsement such as that. Obviously, I like a great tasting, less filling. I brought it out to 600 softball last night. And people said, oh, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. You Team MVP. Come. Yeah. yeah. Team MVP. Oh, come for, with, oh, come with three, three ground outs, but. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You brought the Miller Lite. You're invited you, you back next week game. and next mm-hmm. year. You keep bringing back that I Miller I also brought Lite. a speaker, too. That's the We got to do that more often. You don't get the speakers out in intramural. Speakers also pair nice. With a Miller Lite. Oh, yeah. Definitely. 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 It's that time of year. Tis the season for Miller Lite. Brewed since 1975. And I don't have the ad copy up either. Brewed since 1975 out of uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's the Pilsner of Chicago YL, the city of Big Shoulders. Only 96 calories, 3.2 grams of carbs per 12 ounces. We should probably pull this baby up. Yeah, well, I mean, he's nailing it so yeah, far. I, I got I, it up. I, I mean, keep I'm, going. Dave. Credit, credit to me. I figured out my ad read situation, so I got all the ads now. So keep <laughs> going, Dave. You're on it. You got anything else? Where can they find it? You can find it at MillerLite.com forward slash Redline, or you could just go to any liquor store, Jewel, Mariano's, wherever. Just Miller throw Lights a dart in the city, a and you'll hit a Miller, Miller Lite anywhere and everywhere. That I mean, if you don't serve Miller Lite at a restaurant, Fuck you. or you're an idiot. Yeah, yeah. it took the White Sox like four or five years to. Yeah figure that out you're but stupid all good man. um but miller right, so, yeah celebrate responsibly yeah miller brewing company milwaukee wisconsin the best the best of the best the That's goats, li- but hold on it, it does say at the bottom mandatory disclaimer so we did say everything we need to say right yeah okay sure good. did um drink responsibly credit to us i'm i could do a full hour just talking miller light just a miller light podcast things. good morning good afternoon good evening chicago sports fans this is barstool carl and what's up Steve? chief this is Redline Radio and All Gas No Break Chicago Sports Podcast brought to you by Barstool Sports Chicago, brought to you by Miller Lite. Off the top, no Eddie this week, and that's a good thing because Eddie, nobody at this company deserves a break like that dude. That's true. And so that he's is true. with some family. If you guys want to tag him in a tweet and say, uh, have a nice break, Ed, I'm sure he'd love that. Do that, uh, but bust his balls a little bit first. Be like, Ed, where the fuck were you this week, you lazy prick? <laughs> and just fuck with him a little bit and then be like, ah, just joking. No, Ed's Ed's got... All the, he's got fucking million different things going on, so he definitely deserves a little vacay for the next week or two. Oh, yeah. And eh, not too much going on in Bears season right now. So Literally nothing. Yeah, literally yeah. nothing. So it's not like he's missing out on too much. I'm sure he doesn't give a flying fuck about the dumpster fires that are Chicago baseball teams Well, right I now. think that's why off the top I was like, we could just do an hour on Miller Lite, and that would be like the best course of action because if you send me down any of these paths – Literally any of these paths, I know I'm going to be unhappy. I'll be honest. Yeah. I don't have, I don't have it in me today to have a negative show. I, I, just that, I don't, don't either. Should I carry the show then? Do you want to? I, There's a lot to for talk the about. First Blackhawks, time, right? For the first time since probably 2017, I am genuinely happy with the direction of the Blackhawks. It's just going to oh, take Jesus. a minute. They hired this guy, Luke Richardson. Dude, when they, their next, his jaw is. His jaw. Let's do an hour on the jaw. His jaw. I mean, it could dig a rock quarry like that. Like Great it is tweet. fucking. Oh, that's chiseled. a quagmire jaw. It it is, but it's but it's more powerful. It's like it. it you just, I can't believe oh, yeah. like he he played fourteen hundred NHL games, Luke Richardson, and he's a tough guy, and so he fought people all the time. I can't imagine being like, even if I connect a punch against this fucking rock fuck up your of hands. a human, oh. like I don't want to punch that guy. So then it's just like no matter what you do, even if you win the fight, you lose because your hand's broken. This guy. I think and and when did he play? He played from the late '80s until like probably 2008, something like that. Okay, I'm gonna pull up like his NHL profile. '94. Okay, <laughs> how how good he was back then. Yeah. In '94, he was playing for Edmonton, and uh, yeah, and Edmonton was that was when they were bad. Uh, so he probably played with Dougie Waite and people like that, Ryan Smith maybe. Mm-hmm. But he was, you know, he played his first ever game. He he came into the NHL at 18 years old. So like he and 
played for Toronto, played 78 games as an 18-year-old in 88 because he was like one of those guys who's just born a man. Like he was never a child. <laughs> he was born a man. And he had his introduction. Like Quagmire. Yeah, he, he had his introductory press conference today. He says all the right things. And then, you know, it, it's just one of those things. Like if they – I wonder if the Blackhawks, if they had really done their homework, if they would have hired him because they would have uncovered that I'm connected to this guy six ways from Sunday. Oh, you I are. Two former t- – uh, Two, for, two friends who played with him or played for him in the AHL and Big Are thing. you already compromised, though, now? No. Well, I mean. Dave's it, got the compromise meter. Yeah. So we'll it, see. Look, at, I, look at, I'm not compromised. I've never met him. I've never talked to him. But I've been able to, to get, like, inside scoops on, like, how he is as a person, as a coach, this and that, from five different people that have. Good guy. Awesome guy. Awesome guy. But, like. Tough as nails, but knows how. To, but he's not like a an asshole. Like he's a good teacher. Like that sounds like Hugh a little bit. Uh, he's probably more. It sounds like he's probably more hands on than Joel. Um, but like it'll be like he knows how to deal with veterans, and he's you know it, he's like the opposite of Colleton. So maybe he's not Joel, but he's the opposite of Colleton. Where you know this guy played in the league for twenty one years. Colleton never really played in the league. Then he was an assistant coach um, in the NHL, multiple stops, some uh, some in Ottawa, uh, last four years in Montreal. He had success. Uh, it took Montreal uh, to the Stanley Cup Finals where they had a COVID issue. So he was actually running the bench when they beat Vegas. Uh, so he got them all the way to the final uh, with a team that didn't have like great expectations, but he had them playing well and was a big part of that staff, obviously. He's coaching the AHL, he's, and he's just – he's a hockey lifer. And a, a thing that's, you know, he, nobody has a, a bad thing to say about him is what it seems like. But I, I do think, like, he is the right guy for the moment because he's a first-time coach. So he's going to be able to have, like, kind of a learning, growing experience while next year they're going to be intentionally probably the worst team in the league. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they can't, like, build a culture and right. really start to build this thing, get it back on track the right way. <clears throat> Uh, and, and it starts with him. And I listening to him talk, talking to my people who know him, it really does sound like he he is the right guy. No, but this is his first big coaching opportunity. Um, like head coach, head like, coach, yeah. Like he's in charge of the pro, first, first time, kind of like first time NHL head coach. But he's coach. He was a head coach in the minor leagues for I think eight years, and uh, an assistant coach for for maybe eight years as well. Something like that. So is it not like where baseball David Ross retires and they're like, here you go, buddy. Hand it over. That's exactly here, right, what I was Robin just about Ventura, to say. Right. Here you There's go, buddy. Some of that because the, the guy that Montreal named is a guy that you know. You pulled his name in a dozen trivia question one time. is Marty Saint-Louis. Oh, okay, yeah. So that Marty Saint-Louis. That was thing ever. Yeah, yeah that was weird. Live. And then people it, want to talk shit yeah. about us. And then it's like, oh, live. Uh, but Marty, Marty Saint-Louis got that job. So that happens sometimes. Um, but most of the time, the successful ones, you know, they, you got to cut your teeth a little bit because even though Luke Richardson, who's a he's a bright guy, he is like that jaw. Like I, he <laughs> he reminds me of like a, if Don Draper was a hockey Yo, coach, dude. like looks good in a suit. That's like exactly what I was going to say. Don Draper. And I yeah. didn't even really watch the show. And he he's just like a man's man. But he's a guy who's like he's taken his lumps like and he he has he has the resume as a player that everybody has to respect. So Taves, Kane, veterans, whoever, like you have to listen to this guy because he's played. He played in the NHL for 21 years. Oh, shit. Like, I didn't realize that. Yeah. 20 from 1987 until 2009. That's like, Ch- that's like is that longer than Chelios? Uh, I think Chelios is a little bit longer. But those, are, those are, that's like crazy. He played until he was, he came in at 18. He left at 39. So long, long time. And, uh, and, and. A guy who everybody just has glowing things to say about, and he's smart X's and O's wise. Uh, he's you know people person, and just you know he's he, he can command a room, and they, he needs to be able to be hands on with guys like Vlasic, and you know, and they have a, so many young guys, and they have so many guys that just aren't very good. Wait, what so, is the buzz in the fan base? Like, I, obviously, you're deep in this stuff, you yeah. know, people and sources, but relative to the general populace and the fan base, like. Are they buzzing? Are the are the season ticket fucking reps like slinging a little uh, bit more right now? Or I mean, generally, because here's right. my perception as a, as a Chicagoan sports fan, aware of the Blackhawks, not deep on, is like mm-hmm. they the brand they got 
they had a little bit of work to do they here. A lot, lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. So is the is the general populace just kind of like, all right, this is a good dude, or are they kind of out or it's waiting a, to figure it out? It depends on who, uh, who you define as the general populace. We're sitting here on a Chicago sports show. I would say, and I'm a huge hockey fan. I didn't know a ton about him until his name, so until I started doing research. And it's like, oh, he played in, played in Binghamton. Let me text these guys. And it's like, oh, yeah, we overlap. He's the fucking man. And uh, but I didn't know much about him, and and I'm you know I I rem like I didn't really even remember him as a player until I pulled up like a fight clip. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that guy. Like that, like oh yeah, um, like and kind of like what you're saying like from like the video games. Like you kind of remember some of, like I remember the, the old coach for, at, who took over Carlton, Derek King. Like I don't really remember him as a player, but I remember the little eight bit digital guy that I would use to skate around on yeah. Sega. So and that's kind of how I remember Richardson. But then it's like you pull up these clips. It's like, oh, yeah, this is a this is a fucking man. And it does seem like he's the he they need a guy who can really change the culture and change the direction of uh, the locker room because it's been, you know, rudderless for years and under Colleton and and uh, they need they need a fresh they need fresh eyes and, and, and a new guy and a guy who can usher them into this era where it's like we're going to be tough to play against we're not going to be these Nylanders Bolquists sissy players that just like they don't play the right way there's no accountability just get out there with you know you can be Jonathan Taves left wing for 35 games even though you yeah. fucking suck like there's going to be some accountability and there's going to be some hand holding and some growth and some tips like like I was wondering if they would hire a guy to essentially for next year maybe and maybe the year after to be the Ricky Renteria I don't think that's the case I think this is kind of similar to what Colorado did with Bednar, who's their coach now. They just won the cup. He came in. They finished dead last his first year. He had, you know, he had uh, been a longtime assistant coach, AHL coach, dead last. But they were like, we have the right guy. And now he's a Stanley Cup champion. I think that's going to – that's oh. the model for the Hawks. Like, yeah, the Avs are the model. But you want to have a guy who's going to, like, instill a culture, instill a system. He gave one great answer. Someone was like, well, like, what's your – what are you going to do like tactically? Like what's your defensive philosophy? And he's like, well, I don't know what the roster looks like yet. So that to me is like a perfect answer. I'm not, he's not going to shoehorn speed. something yeah. that they don't have the, like, mm -hmm. he's not going to be for. like, well, you know, I took over for, you know, I came in from, uh, you know, the West coast offense, but I want to run the triple option. So we're right. going to run the triple option with these guys, you know, like it's not going to be that it's going to be like, this guy does it, you know, like these 20 guys, this is the best way for us to play. And I'm going to, you know, create a system that allows them to be successful. Now, they're not going to be successful because they don't have any good players. But, right. but the idea. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no. That's fine, though. Right. It sounds like, like this is the happiest day you have been talking about the Blackhawks on the show in years. It feels all, like all I want for next year. Now, I do want them to be, have a top two draft yeah. pick. I want them to be bad. But I just want to see them be competitive. Another change. Another change. Play hard. Play competitive. Yeah, definitely. I don't care if you lose four to one, but it shouldn't be. The other team shouldn't be like, this is a point night. We're going to go out for a Sunday skate. Like, it's yeah. like, no, like you're going to win four to one, but you're not going to enjoy gonna yourself. Earn that. Yeah. yeah you're yeah, not yeah, going to yeah, enjoy yeah. yourself. You're going to be sore after those games. Right. Yeah. Like, ah, fuck. We got to come to Chicago. The little and it's, pricks. They're yeah. not very good. Like, but they're cocksuckers. Yeah. They're yeah. little cocksuckers. Yeah. So that's what I want uh, for next year. And, and I think this is the right guy. And then, you know, the, the other. This is our last show um, before, because we're not doing a show next week. The mm -hmm. NHL draft is July 7th. The next time we're on this airway, on this podcast, I don't think the Brinkett's going to be a part of the team anymore. I think he'll get traded before uh, right up in the lead up to the draft. So things are going to be radically different. And I think we talked about the the Brinkett thing what, two weeks ago, a week yeah, ago. Uh, so recently. I think uh, provided that they can execute that, I think that's going to be the right move. Um, so there's teams that are interested. Obviously, the guy's 24 years old. He only makes you know six and a half million dollars, and he scored 41 goals. That's you know the, you basically have to kind of get a package like you got for Hagel, but a little bit better, where you're hoping to get four assets, either picks or prospects, that are going to be on an NHL team that'll be competitive. Mm -hmm. And so to bring it can might you know if you want to race to the playoffs, to bring it helps you. If you want to race to the cup. You got to turn one guy into four guys, and I think that's probably the best way forward, I, and, and maybe the only way. I forward. gotta say that uh, that was um, 
Uplifting. Yeah, it was a little bit. Is that the word I'm looking what? for? Uplifting, yeah, maybe? Yeah, uplifting, yeah. yeah. You sound, yeah, you sound finally like... content a little I bit. I was so angry. You were. For <laughs> years about Colleton, about Bowman, about, you know, like McDonough. The, McDonough. I like the, the leadership of this team, it was just driving me fucking insane. And they, got, they still got a lot of problems. And I think there's going to, we'll see how things shake out throughout the organization. But everybody looks smart in the organization if the like, oh, my God, our ticket sales are through the roof. Well, it's because it's not because of some algorithm or some marketing genius. It's going to be because the team, Kyle right. Davidson and and, uh, and Luke Richardson did their jobs. So the hockey ops thing is always going to have to come first when you're trying to sell tickets and, and, and kind of restore the brand and get fans back. I think they're finally they have a plan. They got the right two guys in top uh, in charge at the top with Davidson and Richardson, and we'll see how how it goes. So now, it's going to be an interesting next couple of weeks. Well, good stuff on the Blackhawks, Chief. Thank you. And I know Dave and I are very excited. Dave, you're all dressed up today, or maybe that's just the Brooks Brothers T-shirt. Um, it looks good on you. Thank you. Pig. <laughs> and it's, it's a, pig. a sheep, you idiot. No, <laughs> wait, what Brooks. It? It's a sheep. Is it? Yes. It's I don't know what the logo wait, is. Sit up, Dave. Hold on. Yeah, it's a see. sheep. They're, they're fixing the camera. You guys right don't know fashion. I, no, I, I don't. I'm I don't being know dead fashion. serious. Brooks Brothers is a great logo, great brand. I got a ton of Brooks stuff Brothers in the is closet. Great yes. brand. The sheep is suspended in a ribbon. Okay, so that is a internet. sheep, though. Yep. It is a sheep, yes. Kind of looks like a pig. Well, Chief, you seem like a Brooks Brothers guy. I'm surprised you don't know. I Might be a little too mainstream for Chief. Not enough pastels in, in the whole oh, thing. Oh, that's pastel. the thing. Brooks Brothers is... Oh, they got pastels. Chief is wearing yeah, yeah. basketball shorts right now. These are Lululemon. Lululemon. Chief and I are wearing yeah. matching Lululemon shorts. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. This is not Did brought to you by that? Lululemon. No, we didn't. No. Uh, Did we? I don't I'm have any Lululemon. I'm also wearing a red line radio. Um, I actually really like... I'm becoming a pocket tee guy. I, pocket, I'm, pocket tees I are great. I'm like almost exclusively pocket tees when I can I can't be now. And I'll put yeah, sunglasses, my, yeah, my, my sunglasses, maybe a little vape pen Even, in there, and a little, I would little say tincture oil from three. You, you want to talk about a, a better product is Vineyard Vines over Brooks Brothers. Vineyard, oh, there you go. This is Vineyard, that, this is our Vineyard Vines yeah, one. It's nice. in the store, so it's very nice. No confusion over sheep or pigs or whatever. It's just Vineyard Vines. It's the best. So you can find that in the store. But yeah, it is a sheep. It looks it looks too fat look to, be good, a, to be a. Maybe he hasn't gotten sheared sheared yet. No, I only wear. I mean, she rather. We have a lot of t-shirts. We sell merch. Obviously, you guys go check that out. Sheep or female, goats I, or male. Come on. I don't I think that's on true. <laughs> goats are <laughs> true. totally different animal. How many t-shirts uh, do you have, Tom? Wait, what are we talking about? Is there male sheep? Yeah, dude. I thought sheep and goats were this. No. Who's having sex with a chicken? <laughs> are you talking about lamb? <laughs> yeah. Lamb, oh, no. Lamb's, a lamb is a baby sheep. A goat is a totally different animal. Yeah, goat, like, they climb mountains, Dave. No, I know that. But, like, there's different kinds of sheep. Like, there's different kinds sheep of dogs. Sheep are purely sheep domesticated, yeah. raised to be eaten. Oh, and... that's what I'm thinking of. A male sheep's a ram. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But Not I... a goat. Not a goat. A ram. Do you... and I... <laughs> I think. Is Tom <laughs> fucking with me? No, it, it's no. I gotta, well, I, I gotta watch uh, this Planet Earth again. Yeah, I was not laughing at the, who's having. And what's that from? Who's Seinfeld? Seinfeld. Yeah. yeah, who's, who's having sex? So you got the rooster, the chicken, and the hen. And the, hen. the rooster goes with the chicken. Who's having sex with the hen? <laughs> They're all chickens. And the rooster's having sex with all of them. And if well, that's perverse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard of a uh, billy goat? I have. That's a male goat, a billy. A billy? Yeah. Okay. So now you're all caught up. Can we up. hunt those with Sydney's? Uh, Sydney? In certain areas, yeah. Let's go hunt. I mean, there's mountain goats. There's all kinds yeah, of Yeah, I want to. Yeah. <laughs> you want to kill a goat. I want. Yeah, I want to kill everything. <laughs> Would you rather, you don't want to, you can just do yoga with baby goats now too. You ever seen that? I have not. Oh yeah, the hot girls do it. They just like have these, they do yoga positions and the goats just climb and bounce around on them. That's They're it. like little miniature goats. Yeah, because it helps you stabilize. You I think focus so. focus harder with this fucking goat on animal it. climbing on yeah. it, but it's, it's kind of cute. Um, we should get a petting zoo. I feel like, or we should treat ourselves. We should let people come in here and like, you know, like throw. When us a Dan beer. moves back next year or whenever he does, we should get a petting zoo. Like take and it make on the Danny road. raise it or something, and then we could go when they have the like old town art fair or whatever, and it's like I the mean, Barstool Chicago yeah. petting zoo. Ed doesn't even like having dogs around. You think he's gonna want to have a fucking yeah, but petting Ed zoo? Ed wants to be part of a carnival show more That's than anything. True. He would love that to be part true. of a traveling circus. Call. Yeah, but I think it would have to be separate quarters. Yeah, Eddie would be like standing out there handing out the seeds to the little kids. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, go pet the goats. I'd love to have a little farm. 
well, I mean, you want you don't want to have a little farm. You want to have a fucking you want to have seven hundred acres in like well, southeastern Texas with no, not Texas. Fuck that, too hot out in the Rockies somewhere. But yeah, but or I would have little like uh, farmette in, in Nebraska or or maybe Western Illinois or Iowa, something like that, some place I can get hmm. to. Maybe a hundred acres. Galena's just, lovely. This time my of sister year, just bought you a ton of land in Tennessee. Yeah, super cheap. Well, let's how cheap? Let's look into that. Uh. It was uh, 200 grand for 50 acres, I want to say. Jesus Christ. Something you know, like that. I'm over here. I can't. But the, the military bought it for. I mean, I couldn't buy. I don't even want to get it. Anybody looking at houses right now? Yeah, getting in oh, before the. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, Chief I know. and I got lucky. Well, yeah. Lucky as fuck. Well, I, just, I mean, hopefully. I'd still live in a 500 square foot Lincoln Park one bed. If yeah. It wasn't. It's tough out there. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, that was like a skit for, from always sunny though. I do want to talk about that for a minute. Just one minute. Okay. Take, Carl, take did you whole, watch it? Take the whole, take the watch whole. Cause I want to, I, I want to be what? positive. Like you said, until we get to the inevitable. I, I mean, but well, let's just do it then. Rip it so it started in 2005, I believe their first season. Yep. Still going. It's taken me 17 years to watch it. I'm late. But I'm glad that I started. I got through. I'm through like probably 13 episodes right now. Are you more like Dennis or Charlie? So, so I tweeted. <laughs> He's it. not Dennis. I. Everybody's like, oh, dude. <laughs> People were like, dude, you would fit right in scheming with Charlie and uh, and Mac. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now can I ask you something? Doesn't doesn't Charlie remind you of my buddy Mahoney like relentlessly? A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit. Hey! That's Shout the out. only Mo thing Mo I have about the show is that they're constantly yelling, which is obviously kind of makes the show. But um, I obviously knew how much people love the show. I didn't realize how much, how fucking great the show oh, is. It's the best. It, it's and people were like, oh, season one's the worst, too. And that's basically what I've seen so far. I would say season one is the worst. And it was I was so you constantly laughing out you loud. You haven't even gotten into the Danny DeVito I, No, I just so I'm like two or three episodes into Danny DeVito. OK, so that's season two, two. I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah, was yeah, episode yeah. one, season two. So yeah. I, I was scanning the Wikipedia to see like kind of the history of the show, how it came to be and all that. And um the producers like the executive producers are like all right your guys ratings are shit but we fucking love the show we're gonna add someone that will bring in like his audience because he's already established as no one knows who you guys are so we're gonna bring in danny devito add him to the show you guys are completely safe because we know how great the show is gonna be just trust us and I, I can't believe it took me so long to get on onto the show. It is. I've fucking, been telling you for I, years. You have that, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, I can, uh, the visual of like the board meeting, and you have like the always the creative, sunny people yeah. sitting there, and like the executives on the other end. It's like in behind this door is this person. We got like he's gonna bring in his audience as you're telling me, and then like the big reveal, and like the fucking curtain drops, and it's just Danny DeVito standing there, like, shirtless with like pastrami hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> Rum <Yes>. ham. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> it's it's just a what a match perfect made sitcom. Yeah. I can't wait to rifle. So the relationship it. with Danny DeVito and Charlie just becomes right. That's great. The that's bar. A, yeah. Um, you know what, Dave? Maybe good I'll, for you, it's Dave. on Hulu. Maybe I'll yeah, start it up. So I got too. Hulu to watch a couple of uh, live shows at um, uh, Bonnaroo last weekend. Uh, to, well, two weekends ago now, and I never had Hulu before, so I'm like, ah, fuck it, I'll just get it, and I'm glad I did. You almost need to get the premium, like when you're starting out to binge yeah. it, to skip all those commercials. Commercials, right. Because you're starting out so late. Remember the days when it was on Netflix and you could just like fly, just fly, fly through. through. Yeah. 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 Like 20 there, minutes, bang, you would, bang, you bang. Would be in you, I feel like you'd be in season five right now on Netflix. I'll so probably like, do that. And what is it? Eight <laughs> bucks a month or whatever. I know. I'm just saying yeah. it might be worth it just for Sonny alone. Yeah. That's there's, a, there's that's a couple a, cameos. Yeah. It's not that that's a, that's a top three all time sitcom for me. Yeah. That's what everybody said. Yeah, it's, People are like, Dave, like we know your personality enough through different podcasts and shows that this might be your favorite sitcom ever. Now, What's, it will be very tough to top Seinfeld. I think Seinfeld's like obviously the cream of the crop. It, yeah. You well, know, you can't go in thinking. Yeah. But, but it, it, you can tell minded, Dave. you can be tell that they they drew from, I, I would say, South Park and Seinfeld like crazy. Like you have the one, you know, token chick part of the group a lot of their shit that they're doing and a lot of it so i guess hulu had to pull a few episodes i don't know which ones because they were so like borderline 
cancelable. I well, mean, they've had episodes where oh, they yeah. go on welfare. Yeah, they get th- that's the next crack. one I have to watch. So yeah. don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't <laughs> the tell pilot me. Pilot episode. They say the n word. Oh yeah, no, I saw that. Was, what? Oh, yeah, like there's well, they, they you know there's gun control like that they, they do multiple times. So it, yeah, they they kind of touch them all. Yeah. yeah, I just I, I have a question. What what did what did Dante's tweet mean? I have no fucking clue. <laughs> what was that? What was was he tweet? like mad? There's something that you didn't. He said, watch "Tell it me sooner? more." I think. No, he said, "Tell them why." Tell them why. Yeah, because you said it took me this long to start. So you were, he was like, "Tell them why." I don't know what that meant. Why didn't why why is it taking so long? Is it some reason? No, I just. Oh. What'd you do? What the fuck? I don't. I, are you fucking with me now? No, I thought he was asking you like tell them why you did, it took you so long to start it. That's there how, that's wasn't how I read that. really a reason. I just I. It's like anybody else taking forever to watch a, sh- yeah. a show or movie. Like you yeah. just didn't. I thought there was like a reason. No. Yeah. What no. of uh? What the fuck? I, I yeah. I don't know what, what this means. Else? I thought it was like a part of the skit. Or like the the show, and I just missed it or hadn't seen it yet or something. How many like, stars? Uh, How many stars, Dave? Would you out recommend? of four, four stars. I I can't wait to like that's the white Whatever socks. Whatever scale you put, Soprano or Many Saints in Newark. On. Many that's I fucking hated. I know you said zero yeah. stars. I absolutely fucking hated it. It sucked. Time. But how many stars are there available? I think four, right? For t- TV and movies. Your sure scale, Dave. You could add a fifth yeah. if you want. If you, you want to go six. You can go with a thumbs up, too. Five, five balls. Yeah. I'll give it a five balls. Yeah. I already know that I'm going to love it. And they're like, dude, it just keeps getting better and yeah. better and better and better. And the, like I said, the first season was fucking hilarious. Mm-hmm. So, but that's it. I wanted to touch on that. Um, Let's touch Ch- on Roman Chase for a Utley second, Chase Utley has too. a great uh, cameo eventually, too. Chase Utley? Yeah. Talking about cocksuckers. Uh, well, Chase Hotley's always hard, and you want to talk about a real boner. He did play hard. Yeah, he mm-hmm. was a boner. Uh, that's probably because he rubbed Roman all over. He got hard as hell using Roman, and who doesn't want to lose longer? These summer nights, Dave, you talk about the sun doesn't go down until later, so that means it's either more time or less time for thumping, but <laughs> either way, <laughs> when, 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 when she calls your number and she comes out to the mountain and she says, give me the fucking, give me the righty, give me the power stuff. You got to come running in like Heath Bell. I, I'm sprinting to that mound, just sprinting. And and then when you get there, you just take that little swipe out of your pocket, rub it on your dick. Doesn't transfer your partner. Nope. And it will sure help doesn't. you last. This number blows my mind. 340%. That's longer. like, what's, I mean, how can you get higher than 100? Uh, well, very easily. <laughs> play for, I know. Play, for Bill, Be- play yeah. for Bill Belichick or use Roman. Yeah. How is that? No, that's so great and, and then you know the more you use them the more consistent more effective they get so if you go to uh get roman.com slash redline to get your first month of swipes for just five dollars when you choose a monthly plan five dollars that's it for better sex 340 percent better that's a, that's you know and hand up hand up i'm not too ashamed to admit i need to have better sex and maybe some of you guys listening to this do too and you just don't know it yet this is a cheat code for it you know yeah because who knows how to have yeah we're, sex, we're not a pro us. steroid no, they podcast. just work together she's fine she's staying out late just, they just work together mm-hmm. come on dude what are you doing get some roman <laughs> knock that shit off don't be letting that stuff go on in the house um that's get roman.com slash redline five dollars for your first five dollars first month of swipes. and like chief has said countless times now they think you're having way more sex than you probably. So then are. you can you can be the Roman oh, guy. So that the might actually Months be worth. like a uh, two month worth. Yeah. Well, dude, how about you guys going back to the frat house this summer? Why not? Greek reunions around the corner. Those were good weekends. Greek reunion in Illinois. So what happened was I'm always in the biggest frat guy, but I was in the house. And really, one of the reasons why I was in the house is because like sophomore year we were hanging out at Greek reunion and it's a weekend they just pick you just pick a weekend you go down thursday friday saturday and go home sunday and it's like all the fraternities and the sororities and you just go down rip it up you like play softball so you take over one of those shitty pools you know like the apartment has a shitty pool and there's a fucking 500 kids there that might be the best weekend in college now that i think about it as lame as that sounds too but it's just because it's just your friends there's no lines at bars or whatever so anybody who's partaking in any Greek reunion at any Big Ten university, you can slide in my DMs. Tell me how much it means to you. I'm d I don't want to talk about baseball. We can. Let's do it. You guys yeah, you guys needed to win last night for us to do the show. Yeah, we did. Um eleven to four I don't want to say we. against the Angels. And sorry, the White Sox beat the Angels eleven to four, even though Mike Trout and Otani put on a fucking clinic. Uh Robert looked good. He had a four hundred and eighty foot bound to center. 
Mankata took an 84 mile an hour slider over the middle part of the plate. Massacred that ball. See, the, it's my my biggest issue. Okay, so we'll just start with at, this. Can we look at the schedule and say, just pull up their schedule for a second and let's tell the audience what their next, let what the rest of the schedule looks like to close down the first half. They're 34 and 37. And let's say, like, can we get the five? Can can the White Sox get the five hundred? Or like, what do we? What do you? I'm not even looking at their record right now, because it just so angers me. Ahead. Yeah, thirty five and thirty eight. They're three games under, so they got the Angels tonight. I started. I turned on Comcast yesterday at nine p.m. and they're already in the bottom of the first, which annoyed me. But I appreciate it at the same time because I'm old. <laughs> um, so they got a three game set against the Giants, and then there Ooh. were. It, uh, which is fine. They've actually played good baseball against good teams. It's the shitbox teams. Like, well, you know what? Baltimore is not a shitbox team. They got a ton of young talent. But, I mean, that's a team that uh, organization that says they have World Series aspirations should not lose three or four, two. Um, but they got the Giants. I would love if Radon's pitching against them uh, just as a fuck you to them. And then a big three-game set at home against the Twins. And then you got a four-game set against the what is a complete and total dog shit team, Detroit Tigers. The whole month is against the Central, basically. It's against the Central. So July, do or die for the White Sox. And then the 19th is the All-Star game. So you got let's add it up right here you got seven games against the twins who are in first place right now and then you got three against the indians or the guardians mm-hmm. and then four against the tigers so that is so you have an opportunity to 14. actually do a lot of ground oh yeah you, you this is this is the season right here you if if they get buried they're fucked that's the season they're yeah. cooked. because it could go the Dig other way right bury the bitch thing. yeah but oh, i don't yeah. think so i mean if if if, if it would be hard. I don't know. I don't want to overreact to 11 runs in a night game on a West Coast trip. But, like, the big risk is you guys go on the road. You're playing the Angels. It's a long trip. You're already banged up. LaRusso was in the media talking about, like, hey, I know base running stuff. There's guys playing that are hurt. Like, we just don't have – like, he admitted or somebody said something about guys playing hurt. And so the first leg of this West Coast road trip, I'm sure you're confident against the Giants. But the reality is it's very hard to play there. Oh, like, absolutely. You know, they're yeah, yeah, they're yeah. going to give you a good game. So, like, to go hang 11 runs is, you know, we're recording this before they play again. So it, it was nice because they play like shit. It, it, the first few winnings, I was, like, sitting there seething. Uh, it was, I think it was three home runs and four at-bats off Cueto. Granted, ball was carrying. And and Johnny Cueto, I, I hated the signing because I'm like, here they fucking go, an over-the-hill pitcher that's well past his prime. Johnny Cueto has been fantastic. He can and pitch, right? Yeah, well dude, he works so quick. He hits his spots with four pitches. It is night and day. And we'll talk about him next, watching him pitch compared to Lucas Giolito right now. And G- he's in a slump. He's in a slump. Uh, you could tell his confidence is rattled. He's he's aiming the ball a lot at the sticky I'm stuff. I'm making the spider grip tech yeah. for anybody not watching this on YouTube. So the spider, he was obviously one of the spider tech guys. Everybody knows that. There's no hiding that. But if like some of these guys that were using it, like Jake Kranchek, for for example, Jake Kranchek was arguably like the best middle reliever in baseball for a year, year and a half or whatever. You took take it away from him, the Indians optioned him. Uh, a month or so after because he was just getting completely shit on. Gio last year adjusted well and and put together a very good second half this season. Uh, so, it, like, people are bringing up the, the spider tag and the sticky stuff. I hate I hate that phrase, sticky stuff. It just annoys me. But, um... <laughs> they like, call we, it adhesives. We, all right, with that, I, I'm going to start doing that. The adhesives and... We've already seen that he can pitch not just effectively, but very well without it. Right now, he can't command his slider. He's using it too much. Like, he should be fastball, changeup, because his changeup is still a wipeout pitch. If you look at his stat cast and all that, he's still generating a ton of swings and misses off of it. But he he's trying to use his slider too much. His slider usage is way up, and that's his third best pitch. It's like, dude, go at him with your two best pitches. And then if you have them in a in a pitcher's count, you trying know, to get too cute to get to the change, maybe that's like, exactly hey, what he's doing. Yeah, exactly. The count. It's like you're why 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 even mess around? So I saw this great quote from uh, I, like the light bulb went on. I just, Kevin Gossman was talking about his fucking curveball, and he was like, "Dude, I'm I'm pitching. I'm 
in my first couple of years in the big leagues and I'm throwing this curveball and like my curveball wasn't even that good in college. And then I got through the minor leagues with my fastball and my changeup and I got to the big leagues and he's like, now I'm in the big leagues facing big league hitters, throwing a curveball that wasn't even good enough to throw with confidence against like an SEC seven hitter. And now I'm trying to throw it to like the Yankee seven hitter. And he's like, it's not until I realize like, even though I'm in the big leagues, and I'm throwing this pitch, and this pitch is happening in the big it's leagues. It's not a big it league pitch. It is not a big league pitch. Yeah. And, like, you do not want to be out here throwing fucking anything but big league pitches. And so if I don't have a big league pitch, I'm not throwing the big league pitch. And I don't know if Giolito's slider is that bad, but there it's, is some element of, like, dude, you're very best good stuff, at times. Go with your best stuff. But yeah, you can, you can, and, and I know Gio on a small personal level at this nice point. Nice guy. What a nice guy. And, but he's not a nice guy when he's on the mound. And and I want to hit him up and show him that picture. You know, when he was starting against the A's in the 2020 Mickey Mouse playoffs, when he, he had like 13 or 14 strikeouts in seven innings that game one, he, he was fucking awesome. And there was that one scene where he's just in the zone and you, you can only see his eyes. And it's a, it's like a common meme and people – and he's – Lucas Giolito is 27 years old, I think. He's not some washed up pitcher. That pitcher is still very, very there. It's just a matter of getting back. Like people are shitting down his throat right now. And he hasn't been good. He's got an ERA in the fives right now. He was better against LA the other night. I missed the game because of the concert. But um he he has that in him. And there's not and I know and I know because he's told me. He's like, I am working my dick off to get back to who right. I was. But when you see him pitch and like you He'll walk a guy early, like in the first inning. You can just see it in his head. It, like he starts thinking too much. It's, baseball is a thinking man's game, one hundred percent. Like it, it's ninety five percent mental, and but at the same time, you can't think too much. And I think that's what he was doing. He's just got to get back to being Lucas Giolito's first over or first round pick, top overall prospect in baseball. Hell and back like, though, too, right? Like yeah, I think that's what. Like, and there's that commercial that they show. Constantly during White Sox games, Lucas Giolito in 2018, worst pitcher in baseball. Then he was top five in Cy Young the next year. It's it's all still there. He's just got to find it again, and and I really think he's going to. Um, Let's he's, go to the rest of the, real quick. Let me get let me get a little cease take. Cease against the Orioles was throwing hundred mile an hour knee high outside corner darts and dimes. Yep. filthy 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 stuff. And I just want to keep pushing this narrative that like Dylan Cease very much is as good as anybody in baseball when he's when he's oh yeah. But but for the most part he's bet on. I mean, he's just tough to hit. Right? He's tough he, to hit. Like so, what's, he gets into trouble where? So I saw this stat. This was two or three starts ago that he had now Dylan Cease over the last because he's gotten better and better and better each season. Last year he was finally good in 2021. He was good. Uh, in 2020, people were like, he stinks. He fucking sucks. He wasn't missing bats like his stuff would suggest. Where Dylan C struggles is he, I want to say he was second in baseball in pitches per plate appearance. So the strikeout numbers are obviously there. But, I mean, if you're only going five innings a lot of starts and, and throwing 100 pitches in those five innings right. and laboring to get there, that's not an ace quite yet, but you'll see these glimpses. He had it against uh, who? Who are they playing? Oh, Houston. Um, uh, a week or ten days ago, or whatever. He looked great, um, and he like he he had been a bum slayer. Like I think he's ten and zero in his career against Detroit at this point already. Just completely dominates them. Uh, but he, he pitched well against the Yankees. He he pitched very well against Houston. He's starting to beat up on these really good teams. Uh, and he has that in him. So, like, he should be a little more focused on, on getting quick outs early in the count instead of, you know, going to three, two counts and, and burying guys with whatever pitch he's burying them with. Because He'll probably that's, get there. Yeah, he will get there. It's a work in progress still. And he's only 25, 26 years old or whatever. But, man, when he's on, who, yeah. who's got better shit than him? DeGrom? Yeah, like, his he does, his, it's different than DeGrom because DeGrom's like – you know, it's really like pinpoint. Be like if Maddox had, like you have Maddox pinpoint accuracy with the best stuff of all time. Even, it's like yes. Jacob Degrom. So yeah, it's but I it's even crazier. It's than pretty that. pretty good comp. 
Yeah, no, I yeah. mean, he I is mean, like I'm not, I'm not saying that pitcher of all time. Cease is Jacob Degrom, but I'm Cease, saying when Cease stuff is locked wise, in, though, yes. yeah, his stuff is just as throws a hundred. Uh, yeah, his his breaking ball might be filthy his, slider and curveball. Yeah, his and his changeups, like better. his changeup, he started working off it a little more. Um, and when he when he really pulls the string on it, he just spins hitters in a circle into circles. It's it's fun to watch. Um, and then you got Lynn back. I mean. Talent wise, there's not a team even close to the White Sox in the Central Division. I know it's a completely flawed roster, especially offensively with guys playing out of position, bunch of DHs on the team, but still one through twenty six, that's the best roster. And like I said, if like it's make or break this month. And I say this month as in July now, because we're almost done with June, but it's make or break and I really, really uh hope that they Dig deep and grab their nut sacks, and you're like, "No, what? Fuck it, let's win this division." And, and they can't. I mean, like, it's it, it's a, that's absolutely on the table. What's, does anybody have a price on what they are to win the division? Because that's probably a very good. It's bet. at like plus one seventy five now. That's that's still a good bet. Let's pull, I'm pulling it up now. It was plus one seventy five when I looked two ish days ago. Um, any update on Tim Anderson? He's fucking awesome. Uh, three hits last night. He's hit three forty four. Yeah, he's he's the fucking best. Andrew Vaughn looks like the superstar that they one sixty five, one sixty five. Yep. Uh, probably because of the win last night. The and they gained a half. Yeah, they gained a half game last night on the Twins. But uh, Tim Anderson just looks fantastic. Robert is he's been good. He hasn't been the MVP that we thought as White Sox fans he would be, but he's still good. Abreu's been doing Abreu things. Uh, I just mentioned Andrew Vaughn. He like outside the last two. He struggled a lot last night. He just had a bad game. Whatever. Um, he looks like uh, offensive force. Someone who's going to hit thirty bombs once he starts really hitting for power and hit three twenty every year. He reminds me, and I've said this many times. He reminds me of a right-handed Freddie Freeman. The way he approaches. His I was just going to say Freddie Free. I wanted to talk about Freddie Freeman. Is like on my mind. It's amazing that you bring up Freddie Freeman because I'm literally on Freddie Freeman's baseball reference page hmm. ready to talk about Freddie Freeman. David, I was going to say, if you look at Freddie Freeman from 2014 to now. Like, How old was – so Andrew Vaughn's 24. Went straight from high eight to the bigs. Obviously a atypical path because of the pandemic and everything. Yeah, you got to you got to cut out Freddie's first. I mean, Freddie was so fucking good when he came in. So mm-hmm. like from from his age 2014 season is 24 season. Yeah, that's where he's at now. He had a 139 LPS. What does Vaughn have right now? I'm going to tell you in in so quick. <laughs> 134. Hmm. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. That's that's a promising comparison from strike he's got goals. a weighted run created plus of 137 he's hitting 307 360 465 uh only strike like to see seven. a little bit, bit more slug like to see a little yeah bit high, but he's he, only got he's that's he's why he's hitting 307 gaps. though he's hitting 307 because the home the runs will come down a little bit the home runs will come he's spraying gaps he's a perfect two hoarder for two hitter for this team andrew vaughn is going to be middle of the order bat for the next 12 to 15 years um, he just looks fantastic right now. I can't wait for him to really blossom into that power hitter. And that will come. Uh, very excited about him. Uh, I Rick Hahn does have his work cut out for him, though, this uh, this trade deadline. I have no idea what he's going to do. They've got one, I would say, major trade chip right now with Colson Montgomery, who just got promoted to high A. Winston-Salem, he's got a 36-game on base streak. Uh, he's not striking out at all. He's fucking pissing on the ball but his approach down in the minors has been fantastic and it's been a long long time i can't even off the top of my head tell you the last time the white Sox drafted a high school position player in the first round and he's just off to the races and the white Sox are he's gonna just be flying up all those prospect rankings because he's a Corey seager clone is the popular comparison even though i hate player comps for the most part even though I just did it myself at Freddie Freeman, fine. but that's fine. He's going to be doing a lot of traveling too, as he as he gets promoted. And when you when you got to load the truck up with the with the furniture boys, mm-hmm. I mean, there's nothing I like loading up more than a Chevy. Get that Chevy. Mm. Chevy Drive Chicago dot com. Chevy drives. And now they're taking it to the sea. Did you know that the open seas? <laughs> the open seas on Lake Yarr. Michigan. 
Uh, so now they wanted to, to give you a chance to win Sale Chicago this summer. This summer, you um, can take your friends, your local she- Chicago land and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers are giving away multiple boat charters uh, with Tailgate the Lake. I don't know why they didn't call it Sailgate the Lake. I think that's a better name. But Chevy Drive Chicago, that's the place to go. You can enter to win Chevy Sales Chicago uh, sweepstakes. That's ChevyDriveChicago.com. And that's that's our favorite uh that's our favorite one. I yeah. entered the sweepstakes, I think, in a, in a live read. First time in history anybody's ever entered a sweepstakes in the show and <sighs> on live. And it only took like 10 seconds. If you go to Chevy Drive Chicago, if you pre-populate your stuff, if you shop on Amazon, it should not take you more than 10 mm-hmm. seconds to fill out. I really hope you don't win. You're not a boat guy, are you? No, I'm not a boat guy. I almost died. I, every time I go on a boat, I almost fall in. I don't want to be stressed out with having a fall. Oh, this is me, though. I yeah. want you guys to have the boat. I, I want to win. I want you guys to win. I, I want to win. I want our I wanna... audience to win. Yeah. Well, right. what, 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 what kind of a sick game would it be if one of us won? The... I would like to win. I would like to win. And I would like to bring Danny because I like seeing people puke. And the last time we were on a boat with Danny, he puked. So, uh, But that is ChevyDriveChicago.com. Enter to win that contest. Carl says it takes 10 seconds. 10 seconds. 10, 10 seconds. seconds to have a great day. Everybody, that's like a Unless thing you're on Roman. Then it takes 34 <laughs> seconds because that's good math. 40%. That is good math. Um, or is it 44 seconds? Is it when they do say you it's add a, the am 10 I seconds? Adding that? I don't know. Or do I take it as well, a Well, 34 to 44, what's the no, difference? It's, it's, a 30, it's 34 seconds. Guys, go to ChevyDriveChicago.com. Enter this Chevy Sale Chicago thing. Be cool. Everybody wants to get on the lake. Be the guy. You. How about this? You win this contest, you get to walk around a bar Friday night, being like, "Yeah, I got the boat. I got the boat. I got the boat this weekend." Like, hey, any of your uh, any of your friends in from Indiana want to take the boat out? Um, okay, we are we're going right. We're, what are we at, Tommy? About an hour here. This is good stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cubs should extend Ian Happ. No, they're not. They're going to trade him. They're going to trade everybody. They're going to trade Kyle Hendricks. We're in the middle. He'd of the actually rebuild. be a fucking nice piece for the White Sox. He's exactly what they need. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Nice yep. little no. left-handed hitting bat that shits on right-handed pitching. Yeah, I mean, can play it, all. Are over. you talking about Ian Happ? I am. Ian Happ is not a nice little left-handed. No, I, I, know. I, I know that. Ian, Ian Happ's Happ fucking awesome. Fourth in National League in in wins above replacement for outfielders. He's seventh in weighted runs created plus in all major league outfielders this year. Team sucks. They're they, bad. They're fucking awful. Um, Wrigley's nice. I mean, the great the Dead and Cole concert was lovely, Dave. I'm I'm glad you guys had a good time. I hope we made some money. I, I've said this Dave many times. Fuck, fuck these people. Seriously. I mean, Tom Ricketts and 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 then Crane Kenny and uh all, all these people, all of them. Fuck you guys. And and it's just like, are we looking at his pitching? Wade Miley and Drew Smiley, I understand, are significantly better than what is. Being who is the starting pitching the ERA in June, Dave? I dare you to look it up. I dare you to look up the Cubs team ERA in June. Uh, hold on, I gotta Chief, figure out how to filter. Over, it. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Six. Ah, Jesus Christ! And this is earned runs. This is these aren't just total runs. These I, are the I these guess. are the runs the scorekeepers have deliberately mitigated. They they want to keep these numbers down as much as possible. The the look in your eye tells me that it would be over six. Is it over six, David? I think I figured out how to filter it. Baseball reference 2022 Cubs splits. Uh, why is it at? Yeah, pitching. Are we looking starters or just team ERA? Oh, whichever one, whichever, whichever one's more likely to kill me on the spot. Oof. Yeah, I got it. I got it up. I got it as 6.04, their team Ooh. ERA. <laughs> How'd I handicap that? I didn't even know what it was. I knew right. I knew two weeks ago that On it was like 6.9. Uh, it's it's just a miserable thing. They'll still charge it full price. Yeah, you know? but so, with game time, you get in for three bucks. I don't know if this helps or hurts you, but they're Farm uh, fielding great. independent pitching and they're expected fielding, inter, uh, fielding independent pitching are... About a run and a run in three quarters lower than their ERA, so they're pitching better than their stats is, would suggest. Does that help at all? Yeah, dude. Thanks, man. I mean, it's these are like no one told you these times were coming too. No one told us these times were coming. Like you were ready. I was ready for like a, a quick, 
I was ready for a modified rebuild. No, this is a full rebuild. It's got to be at this point. Everybody's on the trade. Everybody. You got to trade Willie. Ian Harris getting traded. Yeah. Trade. Wilson Contreras getting traded. Kyle Hendricks is getting chopped around. No, I don't know who's gonna. I don't know who's gonna buy Kyle Hendricks. The nice thing is that contract, eleven million bucks a year. Eleven million bucks a year for a guy who's gone out and pitched a game seven, has beaten Clayton Kershaw in the playoffs, has finished top five in Cy Young voting multiple times, and holds like the ten top ten ERA since he got in the league. Uh, that's a good guy to add at the deadline. I just don't know who's going to be like. What what capital are you going to get for a guy who throws eighty seven though? I I know he's effective. It's just like he's yeah he's really struggled this year yeah. and last year too. But he he's coming off a good game against Cardinals. So yeah, I mean your, your Cubs reporters at uh you know it would be a lot easier to talk, talk about this. There is literally no reason to be optimistic for the next like eighteen months. So. You said the farm's good, which it is. Yeah, Brendan Davis just had back surgery. So, top prospect. Yeah. People are like, oh, he should break, you know, he should be in the big leagues this year. Like, yeah. it's a, mm. Mm. Pete Carl Armstrong had two two triples last night in, uh, in Myrtle Beach. It's nice. Just three levels away. If you guys <laughs> want to get excited about that. Every time you say his name, I get a little tingle, though. I just love that name. Pete Crow, Ar- I yeah. might be the only guy who doesn't actually like the name Pete Crow. Armstrong. Oh, it's fun. That's is he going to have the entire I'll, I'll hyphenated like, name on the back of his probably jersey? Just the one big probably. So here's around. a small fun fact. Uh, do you remember the name Seth Schwindenhammer? Yeah, Seth Schwindenhammer was committed to the University of Illinois. He was. drafted in the fifth round by the Boston Red Sox in 2010. 2010. 12 or no 12 i believe so he was my college roommate's roommate in the boston system and if he would have made it to major league baseball i don't know if this is still the case but it was at the time then he would have had the longest last name in major league baseball history oh yeah they didn't know if they'd be able to put it on there you know who has the longest one i've had drinks with this guy before salt lamacchia oh there you go yep jared salt lamacchia and i fucking stuck a bill with him I was ordering all these drinks at Public House. My buddy Smitty, who I've talked about before, he's the guy who gets me out with golf. He's like, hey, the Diamondbacks are in town. Do you want to hang out with these guys? This is like 2014, 15-ish. And I'm like, yeah, I go out. I meet Patrick Corbin, Jake Lamb, Phil Gosselin's there. Still talk. Nice guy. Utility guy. I love Phil. Uh, Salty's there. And my buddy Smitty, who has been kicked out of Barstool events before. So I've, you know. Recently. Yeah. yeah. He likes to throw them back. As well as as fun as anybody gets, there's nobody better than this guy. I go he's just a little bit of a guy. liability. Well, I mean, you know, he's in a, a good way. He's a loose cannon. If you if you're if you are at his age and have battled cancer and lived, I don't. It's hard to just be like, stop doing that, Mike. Uh, okay, Smitty is we're we're out. We're we're at public house and we're just me and Smitty are just like ordering all these drinks. And Salt and Monty's like, who's paying for this shit? And I was like, dude, I am. Don't worry about it. I know all these people. <laughs> And then, like, right on the way up, I'm like, hey, do you see the guy with the wet jerry curl? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, like, Salty's got the tab. And uh, he was with Aaron Hill. I told Aaron Hill I was going to do it to him. And he was like, you should totally do that to Salty. And I was like, you got it, bail. <laughs> it wasn't completely orchestrated yeah. by my – but I was so broke, I think yeah, it's He fine. made $31 million in his career. I think he can, he can, he can handle $475 worth of, uh, I don't know, probably Jaeger bombs. Something what back we then. Drinking back yeah. then? What, were the sh- what, were, what was no, the was shot in 2014? 2014, I think we're at the beginning of the fireball. Fireball, was fireball. Fireball, yeah. Fireball, yeah. fireball, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that was about deep. Was we the, were yeah, deep in fireball. fireball. <laughs> yeah. Um, and was, then I asked the Diamondbacks, I'm like, hey, hey you, any of you guys want to you know, smoke anything? Oh, yeah, dude. That was a good night. Uh, sh- that's why I also am partial to the Diamondbacks. They have good culture. The Cubs do not. No, the Cubs will be fine. We'll the be Cubs – Will be fine. Let's um, talk about our friends at Credit Karma for a second, actually. Let's. Uh, do you guys want a new credit card, but you're not sure how to choose? You don't need to apply for the first offer you see in the mail. Credit Karma can help you zero in on the right option for you and apply with more confidence. It's just what I, I like. Applying with confidence. Who, who, who doesn't want to be applying with Gotta confidence? Gotta have it. So Gotta have that confidence. Here, no, no, no. no. It uses your credit profile. Every, everybody back up for a second, Well, right? Dave, okay. I'm, I'm backed up. So when I saw we were partnering with credit karma i was excited because i had been using i'm trying to see if there's like a been a member since in here uh in my credit karma profile i've been a member of credit karma i signed up for it 
back in like 2015 because I wasn't paying my student loans and my credit was like complete and total dog shit. Yep. And I'm like, I got to fix this. So I registered for Credit Karma, um, got a couple starter credit cards that, you know, I would that I was very careful with low limits and all that. And mm -hmm. it helped me build up to a place where I could eventually like buy my own house and all that. I completely and totally endorse it. I am on this app at least three, four times a week managing my finances personally. And this is no bullshit. This wow. is 100% true. I Are have you gotten, watching this? Dave is like dead serious. I too. have gotten every credit card I've ever had via Credit Karma. Um, a lot of times you apply and it it's a soft inquiry, so it doesn't affect your credit score when you do apply for different cards or see if you <laughs> will be uh, approved for uh, certain cards. Um, it's 100% free and um, you create, like this is their catchphrase, but this is exactly what I was gonna say anyways, you create your own karma. Maybe you're um, Don Draper. Maybe I am. Yeah. I don't know the reference to that really because I don't watch the show, but uh, maybe. I'll take your word for it, but oh, yeah. uh, just go to creditkarma.com. Uh, and if you're looking to repair, this is perfect if you're just, perfect if you're either entering college and want to get a real head start on it, or if you're like right out of college and want to start to you know be an adult. So I, I completely and totally endorse this app. I love it. I've had it for seven, eight years now, whatever it is. Dang. And it's it's the best. Just trust me on that. Go to creditkarma.com. You'll probably, there is a little bit of a fear factor when doing it, especially if you were like me and you knew your credit was dog shit. Mm -hmm. um, but Look, do it and days, it yeah. will really help you build your credit because it, it will tell you like, hey, do this, this X, Y, Z, and you'll start working towards um, an improved credit score. And as you get into actual adulthood, that credit score is that credit score is almost everything. It matters a lot. It matters a lot. It matters for everything. Yeah. Like if you're applying for jobs, they'll check your credit score a lot of times because they don't want to hire pieces of shit that don't know how to manage money, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Creditkarma.com. So, Creditkarma.com. And uh, that's credit it. Karma app, Who, credit Karma app, mean, com. You said it earlier. When you come to Redline Radio, you're getting personal endorsements. I mean, you don't. Yeah, that was. That yeah, was. I wasn't that even reading that. That's, that's, that's that. actually going into the Hall of Fame for me. Top yeah. ten ad reads all time, and it wasn't even funny. It was just passionate. Just it was from our, it was day throwing ninety six, reaching in deep, eighth inning, hundred and ten pitches. Doesn't give a fuck. Looking in the dugout. Um, well, it's easy to do ad reads when you actually endorse the product. You there know? you go. So. And right. I actually endorse uh, Credit Karma, but um, what Cubs Karma, called? they'll be fine. Yeah, Cubs Cubs Karma, we're going to be fine. Um, I... And I, if I were to guess on the Cubs, you won't have to deal with this exact situation again for a long time. Once uh... they become competitive again, I, don't, I think they'll be steadily, at least they should be Cardinals level consistent. I think that's a very appropriate goal for the Cubs being the Cubs. With that, you know, Disney World ballpark and everything. I don't know. I don't know. Why do you say that though? Because you can't do this. You, you just it. If if they should've, aren't, it should have already been. That. Of course, it should have been. So of course why do you have evidence been. to say that the Ricketts would once they're they're going to rebuild? I mean that that, that was that their level. first rebuild to get to the 2016 World Series with that core. They fucked it up. I think they'll find a way to not fuck it up because. I mean, you've you've got a great track record of just trusting owners. So uh, I don't trust my own. <laughs> right. Well, I don't. I don't think that the Ricketts have a lot of equity with the fans right now. No, they don't have right. hardly any. Right. And that's why Should I. I no, no. Not not really. No. I mean, 2016, they got to have some. Yeah, but it's like one of those things where it's ago. like you get what you, you got what you wanted. You won the yeah. title. You brought it home. You know, you did. Did you not think past that? They not think what would happen next once one is they the best did one. win the World Series. Yep. They're like, okay, now you've built this level. Now people expect you guys to be. And and then it's like now you're not even fucking competitive. Right. So they think it's like, well, well, we won you the champ. Well, fucking blow me on a championship. That's six years ago, mm -hmm. and it transitioned out. You guys can maintain it. Couldn't make any. It it isn't just that. It isn't just that. Like, okay, well, we're not good. We're not as good as we used to be. It's like, but we're 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 one of the worst teams in baseball right now yeah. one of the worst clubs they're playing bad the fuck everything's bad attendance is shit unless the cardinals are in town like everything is bad the best use of wrigley field right now like i said is for the dead and co cats mm -hmm. it's for people to enjoy in a public facility and i i don't even want to be like and i'm struggling because i got you know 
I'm I'm as mad about the gameplay as possible on one side. On the other hand, I'm like, I'll talk to Jake about it and be like, we well, can't get that mad at the players. I'm like, what the f- why? Why? Well, they're all trying. And it's they're like, not. I don't know. Bring him on red line next they're week. They're not yeah, good. I would love to. I would. He is. I think when he comes in town, we'll sit down and have a very thorough conversation about it. Next week, he's hosting people or. Was it Fourth of July? Yeah, we'll figure. But that I, out. I think I'm with you on that. With the like, you can't get that mad like, at the I'm, players because the players just like they're not good. You know, like it's not like you can't expect them to go out and be Mike so Trout. Like, well, they're can't not be mad. Right? You can't be mad. They're not good. Right. I don't know. I, so it's all on management and ownership. Speaking of which, I'm, I regretfully ha- I'm, I'm being. I have to leave. Can I leave for ten minutes? Can you guys? Yeah, go, go for mind. it. I'm yeah, sorry. you need yeah. to take a walk. That's fine. I, yeah. To, our, to we, our audience, I hope you guys have. A very, I'm, to our audience, have a great Fourth of July. Yeah. Thank you guys very much for your support. And Red, I love you guys blue. from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, America. That was good. Yeah, that was a good America. Yep. Yeah, Cubs stink. They're, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're the lovable they're losers so bad, again. I'm getting out of here. Yeah, they, the lovable they losers. They are kind of love. They got some fun players to watch. Yeah, they got on. guys that I, you know, they got guys that are exactly Morel. Yeah, Morel. Hap, they got what? some guys. Schwindel. Yeah, they got they got some lovable guys who just aren't very good at baseball. So. It's kind of where where things are. I mean, we had that with like Paulka and stuff. Like Paulka is still a fucking cult hero. We played like a hundred games for the White yeah. Sox. He actually, Danny Paulka just got his contract purchased by the Mets. Hey, um, good for him. He, so he's back in the bigs. Mm-hmm. I think I don't know how, uh, but Dan Paulka is one of my favorite guys I've ever met through this job. Just as genuinely good a dude as there is, and he's fucking hilarious. So I'm glad yeah. to see him back. Um, He's giving it a shot. Yeah. He was dominating fucking triple A. Well, there you go. Yeah. Any thoughts on this Bulls kid? Not a single nope. thing. What's his name again? Uh, Dale and Terry. Where'd he go to college? Arizona. That's a good program. We'll see. Lou Dolson or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lou Dolson. Is, I am. I think so. I'm pretty sure Lou Dolson's dead. Oh, yeah. He's definitely dead. Okay. He's, he's dead. dead. And I think he's been out of there for at least 15, 15 years. He probably longer than that. Well, was he the coach on the 05 team? Uh, he was. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah. So I would say right about 15 yeah, years. Yeah. He died uh, almost exactly two years ago. R.I.P. Lou Dolson. Great. Like, it. talk about a guy who ages gracefully. If I if I have that head of hair when I'm 70 something, that, like, that, his hair is like as white as it, get, as it oh, gets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, that's, I'd love to have his hair when I'm old. Good hair. Good hair. Anything else from you, Dave? I got a whole lot of nothing. Have a happy Fourth of July. We will be off next week. Yep. And um, I'll be doing uh, because we don't have a podcast. I'll do Blackhawks spaces when news breaks. And so yeah, we can, I'm going to start doing do that, that with the White. I'll do that with the White Sox in the coming weeks. I I should be doing that more anyways. Yeah. Um, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a kind of a painful summer. But we're on the right track, I think, with the Hawks and Davidson and Richardson. So we'll just uh, get to it, and we'll all gas. No breaks, and DJ play that shit.